They're here. It is only one man. No. They're here. To understand the battle for Jerusalem from the perspective of Balian, we have to go back to the moment when Balian first received the maxims that have guided him on this journey. After Balian is knighted, Godfrey once more emphasizes Balian's duty. Defend the king. If the king is no more, protect the people. Balian's protectiveness over the people is clearly portrayed in the battle for Karak, where he and his knights attack the Muslim army to safeguard the citizens fleeing into the city. It is also shown in the extensive scene of Balian making improvements to his newly acquired lands thereby laying the basis of what Kant calls the Kingdom of Ends. He does speak in connection with the respect for persons of what he calls a Kingdom of Ends. Uh, that is to say, if you treat people as ends rather than means, what you're doing is advocating that society should be a Kingdom of Ends. You know, say a kingdom of people, of equal worth, value. This is the basis for his emphasis on human rights. So um, the, uh, the, uh, the respect for persons leads to the notion of kingdom of ends. And in his religion book that we'll be getting into, he, um, he talks of this kingdom of ends simply as the kingdom of God. This relates back to an earlier conversation between Godfrey and Balian. Do you know what lies in the Holy Land? A new world. A better world than has ever been seen. A kingdom of conscience. A kingdom of heaven. There is peace between Christian and Muslim. We live together. Or between Salah Adin and the king we try. What we see here is Balian's personal philosophy extended into a larger social context. It envisions a world that always treats humanity as an end. A world of perpetual peace. Uh, in the light of that he proposed uh, what he called a League of Nations. That's where Woodrow Wilson got the idea, straight from Immanuel Kant. He has a book, um, Kant does, a little booklet called Perpetual Peace, in which he proposes this, that rational people, you see, acting out of goodwill, should contract together, a contractual arrangement, contractarian approach. According to Kant, our natural state is one of war. Peace, therefore, is something that must be established, which is what Salah Hadin and King Baldwin try to do. We can however already see the shortcomings early on in the film by addressing the first of Kant's requirements for perpetual peace, which is that no secret treaty of peace shall be held valid in which there is tacitly reserved matter for a future war. This requirement is relevant to one particularly interesting scene in which Salah Hadin is confronted about a promise he made to the Muslims. You promised. You promised to return Jerusalem. Don't forget. If I do not deliver war, I have no peace. The king of Jerusalem will die soon. When he is dead, the boy will become king of a kingdom he cannot control. The Christians will make the war you need. What this suggests is that a war was coming regardless of Balian's actions. This might seem like the peace between Christians and Muslims was just a delusion. The Hospitaller, however, is a bit more optimistic about it. If it lives only for a while, Tiberius, it still has lived. Nevertheless, war comes to Jerusalem, and it comes on Balian's watch. Here again we are shown that this battle is not about maintaining Jerusalem, but about protecting its people. Salah Adin will show no mercy. We must hold out, force him to offer terms. What terms? We fight for the people, their safety and freedom. 
It might be interesting to note that Balian is unsure about what will happen if he loses, seeing as he and Salahadin haven't actually met at this point. This is revealed later when Balian seems surprised at Salahadin's benevolence. I will give every soul safe conduct to Christian lands. Every soul. The women, the children, the old, no one will be harmed. I swear to God. He even points out The Christians butchered every Muslim within the walls when they took this city. I am not those men. I am Salahuddin. Salahuddin. In the end, every soul in Jerusalem is granted safe passage to Christian lands. The city is lost, but the people are not. And with that conclusion, Balian fulfills his highest duty and goes home.